going to do a safe start. Make sure your spring brakes are set. Transmission is in neutral. Push in the clutch, turn on the key. ABS light should turn on, then it should turn right back off. If it stays on, that indicates a fault with the ABS system. Start the truck, holding your hand next to the key for up to five seconds, waiting for the oil pressure gauge to rise to normal range. There's the oil pressure, so you can take your hand away. Off the clutch nice and easy, just to make sure it's in neutral. Water temp between 150 and 210 degrees. Oil pressure between 20 and 60 PSI. Volt meter between 12 and 14 volts. Steering wheel is clean, not cracked or broken. No more than two inches of free play on a 20 inch wheel or 10 degrees. City horn works, highway horn works. All three pedals are wheel grooved. All three are free of grease, oil, obstructions, and debris. The clutch has one to two inches of free play, and the brake is firm, not soft or spongy. We have four safety items. The 10 pound fully charged ABC fire extinguisher. The safety pin must be present within immediate reach of the driver or in the side compartment clearly marked. Three red reflective triangles in good condition. A spare fuse for every major circuit unless the truck is equipped with circuit breakers. Seat belt's not cut, torn, worn, or frayed. It latches and unlatches. Headlights on. Panel lights dim, panel lights bright. Left turn indicator, right turn indicator. High beam indicator. And the hazard indicators all work as they should. Lights are done. Turn them off and go on to the next switch. Wipers on, wipers off. Windshield washers work as they should. Arms and blades are securely mounted, not cracked, bent, or broken. Wipers are done. Get glass. The windshield is clean, not cracked or broken, free of obstructions and illegal stickers. The mirrors are clean, not cracked or broken, free of obstructions, and are well adjusted. Our heat and our defrost, just turn all the knobs hard right. The heat and the defrost both work. Now we're going to do the brake test. The setup for the brake test, you have to make sure your air gauge is at at least 120 PSI. If you're not at 120 and you start the brake test, it may fail for the brake test. If it's not at 120, just give it a little bit of RPMs to get the air pressure up there a little quicker. We're at 120. Pushing the clutch, put the transmission into low gear. Now we're set up. You have to check the tractor spring brake, trailer spring brake, trailer hand service brake, and the combination foot service brake all individually. Whichever one of these knobs is pulled out, that's the one you're testing. We're going to test the tractor spring brake. You can leave that one pulled out, you can leave those brakes applied, and release the trailer. You can get off, let off the clutch nice and easy to give a light tug against the tractor spring brakes. Tractor spring brakes are holding. Now you're going to flip that around trailer spring brakes and release the tractor spring brakes. Off the clutch nice and easy to give a light tug against the trailer spring brakes. Trailer spring brakes are holding. Now we're going to release them both and pull down on the trailer hand service brake. Off the clutch nice and easy, get that light tug. Trailer service brakes are holding. Release that and we're going to pull forward about three to five miles an hour while hovering our hands over the steering wheel will bring the truck to a stop, making sure it doesn't pull to the left or to the right. The truck didn't pull left or right, but if it did, that would be an indication of a low tire, suspension issue, shifted load, or a brake out of adjustment. Very important right here. Set the spring brakes first, then put it in neutral, and release the brakes. That ends the brake test. If at any time during the pre-trip yard or road test the truck is in neutral while the spring brakes are released, it's an automatic fail. For our air leakage test, the setup for that is almost the same as it was for the brake test. The very first thing you look at is your air pressure gauge. If it's not at 120 and you start the air leakage test, it'll be an automatic fail for the whole pre-trip. So give it some fuel and get the air pressure up there. We're at 120, pushing the clutch. 
transmission into low gear just like last time. Except this time we're going to turn the engine off, turn the key right back on, and release the clutch. Now we're set up for the air leakage. There's four tests. Static, apply, low air warning, emergency spring brake, sale, S-A-L-E. They have to be done in that order. For the static air leakage test, you're going to release both the tractor and trailer spring brakes, watching your air gauges. After the initial air loss of 10 to 15 PSI, you should lose no more than 3 PSI in a minute. Next is the application test. You're going to apply firm pressure to the combination foot service brake and hold it, watching your gauge. After the initial air loss of 10 to 15 PSI, we should lose no more than 4 PSI in a minute. Off the right. Next is a low air warning test. This is why the key has to be on, so reach down and double check to make sure the key's on. We're going to fan down the combination foot service brake and make sure the low air warning light and buzzer turn on before we drop below 60 PSI. Low air warning light and buzzer turned on about 70 PSI. Next is the emergency, emergency spring brake test. Continue to fan down the combination foot service brake and make sure the trailer valve pops out first between 45 and 20 PSI and the tractor valve pops out second between 40 and 20 PSI. Trailer valve must pop out first. When you're doing this, don't watch the gauges. Watch the valves, because sometimes they just kind of slide out. And if you're pumping and you don't notice them slide out, it'll be an automatic fail. So keep your eye on the valves. When you see them pop out, just stop pumping and then tell the examiner when they popped out at. out at about 30 psi and the red one did pop out first. Now we're going to do a, another safe start for air recovery. Make sure the spring brakes are set. Push in the clutch, put the transmission back into neutral and fire it up. Hold the hand next to the key for five seconds, waiting for the oil pressure to rise. Rebuild air from 0 to 80 psi in 3 to 3.5 three minutes. From 85 to 100 psi in 45 seconds at idle. The governor cuts in between 90 and 100 psi and cuts out between 120 and 125 psi. If it does not cut out, the safety valve will open at 150 psi to save the air system from damage. That's it for the end cap. Let's go do the coupling. Alright, test A. No fuel, oil, or coolant under the truck that would indicate a leak. All the hoses are secured from end to end. No abrasions, bulges, or cuts. Not leaking. Belt driven alternator, securely mounted, not cracked in or broken. Wires are tight, not cut, burned, or frayed. Belt is not cut or frayed and has no more than a quarter inch of free play. Your gear driven water pump. Is securely mounted, not cracked in or broken, not leaking. To check the oil level, call it the dipstick. If it's full, great, but if it's low, add a gallon to the field tube and then recheck it. That's it for this side. Let's go to the other side. On the ground, that would indicate a leak. All the hoses are secured to end to end. No abrasions, bulges, cuts, not leaking. Coolant reservoir, securely mounted, not cracked or broken, not leaking. Filled to the proper level, cap is on tight. Power steering reservoir, securely mounted, not cracked or broken, not leaking, filled to the proper level, cap is on tight. Your whole fuel system, securely mounted, not cracked, been or broken, not leaking. Your gear driven air compressor, securely mounted, not cracked, been or broken, not leaking. It's that big blue piece right here. Looks like a little lawnmower engine. It's at the front, you get your gear driven power steering pump. Securely mounted, not cracked, bent, or broken, not leaking. For our steering system, you get the steering gearbox, securely mounted, not cracked, bent, or broken, not leaking. Pitman arm, drag link, upper control arm, and then buried way down here where it's really hard to see, 
is your lower control arm. That is your lower control arm, and then this round bar going from one side to the other is the tie rod. They're all not cracked or broken, and they're all secured with castle nuts and cotter pins. Castle nuts and cotter pins. And they all must be well greased. For your suspension, you have the front spring hanger. And then buried in the back, way back here where you cannot see it, is the rear spring hanger and shackle. Securely mounted, not cracked or broken. Shackle must be well greased. For your leaf springs, no more than 25% cracked, none broken or missing, and no damage to the main spring. They are secured to your axle with two U-bolts and a saddle. Looseness would be indicated by shiny metal between the saddle and the U-bolts. Not cracked, but are broken. The shock absorber is secured at the top to the frame and at the bottom to the axle with nuts, bolts, and soft rubber bushings, not cracked, bent, broken, or leaking. For the brake system, you get the brake hose, secured from end to end, no abrasions, bulges, or cuts, not leaking, not spliced. That goes into your brake chamber. This is a single brake chamber, securely mounted, not cracked, bent, or broken, not leaking. Coming out of the middle of the brake chamber is your push rod. The push rod is secured to your slack adjuster with this two-pronged meat fork looking doohickey called a clevis. This is your clevis, a pin, and the hairpin clip looking thing is called a cotter pin. So push rod is secured to slack adjuster with clevis, a pin, and the cotter pin. Not cracked, bent, or broken. The slack adjuster must be well greased and have no more than one inch of free play with the wheels chalked and the spring brakes released. Moving inside the wheel, the brake shoes, you guys can get up in there if you can. Brake shoes must have at least a quarter inch of material remaining. No grease or oil. Grease or oil would be an indication of an inner wheel seal leak. The brake drum is round, not cracked, bent, or broken. No illegal welds. I'll get you again later. That's it for the brakes. For our tires, steer tires, check all three sides. No abrasions, bulges, or cuts. Even wear across the tread. Same size and type tire all the way across the axle. These cannot be recapped. They cannot be retreaded. A minimum of 4 30 seconds of an inch in every major groove. 100 to 110 PSI. Check cold with the tire gauge only. The wheels are round, not cracked, bent, or broken. No illegal welds. The valve stems are straight, metal, and capped, not leaking. All 10 lug nuts are present and tight. Indication of looseness on a steel wheel like this one would be a rust trail streaking off the lug nuts. If this was an aluminum wheel, it'd be a white powdery residue. For the oil hub, all the bolts around the center of that oil hub are present and tight. If you see oil leaking around there, that would be a sign of an outer seal leak. To check the oil level, pop a rubber cap out in the middle, stick a tool in, and make sure you have at least one inch of oil. For the lights, the amber lights on the hoods are your turns and hazards. Then you get your five amber lights above the windshield. The three in the middle are your identification lights. The two on the outside edges are your clearance lights. Amber, not cracked or busted, work as they should. Do not forget to get back in the truck to test those lights before you say you're done. That's it for test day. So that, that could be potentially it. In cab coupling, test day. So a lot of the same crap just repeated. All the crack men are broken, all the abrasions, ball just cuts. If you leave that stuff out, you don't get the point for all those parts. So you got to get yourself in that mindset. If you look towards the back of the book, there's like a little cheat sheet where it says everything metals, crack men are broken, everything rubbers, abrasions, ball just cuts. All the electrical cords are cut, burned, frayed. I don't care what you think goes through the hoses. If you see a hose touching a part, it's automatically not leaking. There's only one part on the entire pre-trip that you have to say not leaking on that does not have a hose touching it, and that's the shock. Other than that, you don't need to know what's in the hoses, but if you see a hose going to it, it's not leaking. Um, there you go to B, the brakes aren't going to change all that much. The tires aren't going to change all that much. The suspension's going to change a bit, though, because a lot of the same simple rules just reapply. All right, you ready for B? SB, turn signal, amber, not cracked or busted, works as it should. Door hinge is securely mounted, not cracked, bent, or broken. Mirror arm is securely mounted, not cracked, bent, or broken. Outer door latch works. 
inner door latch works, and the weather seal on the door is intact. Steps and the ground handles are securely mounted, not cracked in or broken, no grease, oil, obstructions, or debris. The fuel tank is not cracked in or broken and is not leaking, secured to the frame with saddle straps. They have these soft rubber gaskets that prevent the straps from burning a hole in the tank. Fuel, tight, fuel cap is tight, not cracked or broken, has a rubber gasket that prevents leaks. Do not call it a gas tank or a gas cap, you will not get the point for it. Turn fuel tank. Fuel tank, diesel tank, don't call it a gas tank. It will not give you the point. Uh, turn signal and marker light, amber, not cracked or busted, works as it should. Battery box and batteries. You have to get in the truck with oil. I'll go through that. Battery box and batteries are securely mounted, not cracked or broken. Cables are tight, not cut, burned, or frayed, and the batteries are not leaking. In the middle here, you got your catwalk. The steps to get on the catwalk and the little grab handle that helps you get on the catwalk. Securely mounted, not cracked, bent, or broken. No grease, oil, obstructions, or debris. The frame, go from the top flange all the way down to the bottom flange, front to back on both sides. Not cracked, bent, or broken. No illegal welds. The drive shaft and U-joints, which are buried in the middle of the truck. It's a round tube that goes forward and backwards. The drive shaft, the big round tube. The U-joints are at the ends of that big round tube. Drive shaft and U joints are securely mounted, not cracked, bent, or broken, and the U joints must be well greased. The exhaust, securely mounted, not cracked, bent, or broken. Clamps are tight and not leaking. Leaks would be indicated by black soot. There's a lot of stuff back here you can't see, like any of the brakes or most of the suspension. You can't see it, but you still got to talk about it. Our suspension hanger is securely mounted. Not cracked, bent, or broken. The control arm and helper spring are securely mounted, not cracked, bent, or broken. They are held onto your axle with two view bolts, saddle, axle seat, and anchor plate. Looseness would be indicated by shiny metal between the saddle and the U bolts, not cracked, bent, or broken. If you have a torque bar secured to frame and axle, not cracked, bent, or broken. Towards the rear of the axle, you have your airbag, your air, air bellows. Secured at the top to the frame and at the bottom to the axle. No abrasions, bulges, or cuts. Not leaking. Your shock absorber. Secured at the top to the frame and at the bottom to the axle with nuts, bolts, and soft rubber bushings. Not cracked, bent, broken, or leaking. For our drive axle brakes, it's almost the same as it was on the front. We've got to add in talking about an air tank and we're going to change single brake chamber to dual brake chamber back here. Other than that, it's all copy and paste. Our air tank, securely mounted, not cracked, bent, or broken not leaking. Air hose secured from end to end, no abrasions, bulges, or cuts, not leaking, not spliced. Dual brake chambers on the drive axles are securely mounted, not cracked, bent, or broken, not leaking. Push rod is secured to slack adjuster with clevis, pin, and cotter pin, not cracked, bent, or broken. Slack adjuster must be well greased and have no more than one inch of free play with the wheels chalked and the spring brakes released. Brake shoes must have at least a quarter inch of material remaining. No grease or oil. Grease or oil would be an indication of an inner seal leak. The brake drum is round, not cracked, bent, or broken. Has no illegal welds. For our tires, we're going to keep the exact same order to it. We're just going to change a few of the specs we talked about earlier and add a few new things in. Check all three sides of your drive tires. No abrasions, bulges, or cuts. Even wear across the tread. Same size and type tire all the way across the axle. These can be recapped and they can be retreaded. A minimum of only two thirty seconds of an inch in every major groove. 100 to 110 PSI, just like the front. But here you can check them with a gauge or a tire pump. Must have three inches of space in the middle. If there's something wedged in between the tires, use a tool to remove it, not your hand. And the wheels must be touching. The wheels are round. Crack been or broken, no illegal welds. Valve stems, wherever they are, are straight. Metal, not crack been or broken, not leaking. All ten lug nuts are present and tight. Indication of looseness on a steel wheel like this one would be a rust trail streaking off the lug nuts. If this was an aluminum wheel, it would be a white powdery residue. 
for your axle seal. All the bolts around your axle seal are present and tight. If you see oil leaking around your axle seal, that would be an indication of an outer seal leak. You cannot check the oil level back here like you can in the front seat. Go talk about it. Splash guards are securely mounted, have no excessive damage, and are no more than eight inches off the ground. The lights at the back of the tractor, the red ones are your brakes, hazards, and turns. The white is the reverse light. Do not forget to get back in the truck to test those lights before you say you're done. That's it. Does that answer? <laughs> so the only lights you guys are going to get are the lights on the section of the truck you're going to get. So it's test B starts right there at the front of the door and ends back here. You're not going to have to check the headlights. Okay? If you get test A under the hood, there's no brake lights under the hood or on the front of the truck, so you ain't going to have to test the brake lights. So the only lights you have to test are the ones that are on your section. And in the book, it spells out exactly which lights you're going to have to test. All right? Let's do C real quick, and then we'll go lunch. A lot of the same crap on C, too. Everybody's guaranteed to couple it. But since we got glad hands and this little electrical box on the trailer, that's part of the trailer, so you got to talk about part of that again. Airlines are secured to the front of the trailer with glad hands glad hand seals not leaking pigtail secured to the front of the trailer with a safety latch no corrosion the header board has no damaged panels with no missing rivets clearance lights in the top corners are amber not cracked or broken work as they should side of the trailer has no damaged panels with no missing rivets and 50 percent DOT tape down the side of the trailer underneath we have no damaged cross members with no missing rivets. The landing gear frame and the struts are securely mounted, not cracked, bent, or broken. The crank handle securely mounted, not cracked, bent, or broken. Works in both high gear and in low gear, and it has a place to rest. It cannot be dangled. Sand shoes are securely mounted, not cracked, bent, or broken, have no debris. Marker light and the turn signals. Amber, not cracked or busted, works as it should. Sliding tandem frame. Sliding tandem frame is securely mounted, not cracked, bent, or broken. The locking pins are in the out and lock position. The locking handle is in the in and lock position, not cracked, bent, or broken. For the suspension, it's not far off from the front. There's no airbag to talk about, there's no shock to talk about. There's a couple new things we got to add in. For the trailer suspension, you get this Christmas stocking looking doohickey thing in the front. In the middle, you get this V-shaped doohickey thing. And then in the back, behind the last axle, you got this U-shaped looking thing. They're all spring hangers, just like they were on the front. They're all just different shapes. It doesn't matter, they're all the same part. So when you get the trailer, you can just say all three spring hangers on this side are securely mounted, not cracked, and broken. You got leaf springs here just like the front, copy and paste. No more than 25% cracked, none broken or missing, and no damage to the main spring. They're held onto the axle the same way the control arm and the helper spring was held onto the axle on test feet. U bolt, saddle, axle seat, and anchor plate. Looseness is indicated by shiny metal between the saddle and the U bolts, not cracked or broken. You got four bars to learn for the suspension back here. This bar right here goes from this side all the way over to right here, kind of just teeter-totters in the middle. That's your equalizer bar. Up in the front. That square bar on the passenger side going forwards and backwards, that is your torsion bar. This round one on the driver's side opposite of it is the torque bar, and this is your stabilizer bar. There's good descriptions of them in the book. On the book it says torque bars, the round threaded one with the nut and bolt on it on the driver's side. The torsion bar is a square one on the passenger side. And then the stabilizer bar goes from one of the spring hangers to the other. So torque bar, torsion bar, stabilizer bar, and then that first one we looked at is the equalizer bar. Every time you test, or hopefully the time you test, it's going to be done on the driver's side. So if it helps you, Torque bar is always going to be on your driver's side, always on the side you test on. 
right? I don't know why, but some people seem to get those confused. For the trailer brakes, still can't see it, but it's still not far off. Still got dual, dual brake chambers here like we did on B. There's no air tank to talk about, but there's one little special thing you got to say about the airlines. Other than that, it's all copy and paste. For the airlines, secured end to end, little abrasions, bulges, and cuts. Not leaking, not spliced, just like any other airline, but these, 18 to 24 inches off the ground. Dual brake chambers are securely mounted, not cracked or broken. Push rod is secured to slack adjuster with clevis pin and cotter pin. Not cracked or broken. Slack adjuster must be well greased and have no more than one inch of free play with the wheels chalked and the spring brakes released. Brake shoes must have at least a quarter inch material remaining. No grease or oil. Grease or oil would be an indication of an inner seal leak. The brake drum is round, not cracked or broken. No illegal welds. Tires, 100% copy and paste from what we just did. Check all three sides, no abrasions, bulges, or cuts. Even wear across the tread. Same size and type tire all the way across the axle. These can be recapped, they can be retreaded. A minimum of only 230 seconds in every major groove. 100 to 110 PSI, check hold of the gauge or a bumper. Must have three inches of space in the middle. If there's something wedged in there, use a tool to remove it, not your hand. And the wheels must be touching. The wheels are round, not cracked, bent, or broken. No illegal welds. The valve stems are straight, metal, and capped, not leaking. All 10 lug nuts are present and tight. Indication of looseness on a steel wheel like this one would be a rust trail coming off the lug nuts. If this was an aluminum wheel, it would be a white powdery residue. For your oil hub, all the bolts around your oil hub are present and tight. If you see oil leaking around there, that would be a sign of an outer seal leak. Check the oil level, pop the little rubber cap out in the middle, Stick a tool in to make sure you have at least one inch of oil. Splash guards, same speed. Um, securely mounted, no excessive damage, and no more than eight inches off the ground. This is a marker light, amber, not cracked or busted, works as it should. ABS light, or red, not amber. ABS light is amber, not cracked or busted, works as it should. To test it, Get in the truck and apply to service brakes, the ABS light should turn on with the brake lights. When you release the brakes, the ABS light should go back off. If it remains on, that indicates a fault with the ABS system. Back of the trailer. You got your door hinges, all securely mounted, not cracked and or broken. Locking rods are locked at the bottom and at the top on both sides. I have a chain with a hook on the side of the trailer to hold themselves open. Not cracked, been or broken. For your bumper, securely mounted, not cracked, been or broken. Must have 100% DOT tape across the bottom of the bumper and is 18 to 24 inches off the ground, just like the airlines on this section. For the lights, you got your little white license plate light, not cracked or broken, works as it should. Brake lights are always going to be on the inside. Turn signals and hazards are always going to be on the outside. And the three at the top and the middle are your identification lights. They're all red. They're all not cracked or busted. They all work as they should. Do not forget to get back on the truck and test the lights before you say you're done. That's it for C.